uh, we'll call the uh, <coughs> December 8th uh, Street Committee of the Town of Christiansburg meeting to order. And we have a number of items, so we'll jump, we'll delve right in. And if there are no adjustments to the agenda, on the recommendations of staff, we'll just roll right in and turn the program over to uh, Sister Warren. Well, as you see, we do have six plots under review, and we've had a bit of a pent up demand. Uh, and, uh, and also moving forward for folks that want to uh, get some uh, lots recorded before the new year. So uh, the first one is, is probably the most straightforward one. And it's um, in the medical subdivision, uh, Acres Farm Road, uh, right across from um, from the... Uh, um, Horn Funeral Home. The, the Horn Funeral Home, thank you. And uh, in the, the new bank is here on the corner which isn't showing up on the area yet. So it's pretty filled out subdivision now. And um, what the uh, uh, community health center would like to do, and I'll flip to the, uh, to the plot now. Um, So basically at the end of the cul-de-sac, there are currently two lots, and they are wanting to combine the two lots. So they're about an acre each, and uh, they would like to create uh, one large uh, parcel in order to put a, uh, a structure uh, here as well. Um, it's, it's fairly straightforward. The only uh, item that is a bit complicated is they do have an easement that is uh, Centered along this property line, and um, and so that does require capital to vacate that, and that would be vacated like that. Um, and, uh, and so that would be centered on this property line here. Now, other than that, it's simply this line goes away. The un it's unencumbered. There's no currently no uh, public utilities within that uh, easement, um, and so uh, it'd be a little more difficult if, if they were uh, they couldn't do it. Uh, but, uh, but they can, and so um, so the the uh, easement and the lot line would simply go away with this with, with this location. So that's just a garden variety public utility easement, right? That's yes. Typically done when they first develop the property. So correct, right? Yes. Uh, in, in most cases, uh, uh, unless you know otherwise, you know, kind of discussed by. Staff and the developer will have a 15-foot uh, public utility easement that straddles the property line uh, for, for center lines. And then on the outside, you'll see the easement actually is full, a full 15 feet because that, that's not part of the subdivision to the rear here. So there's 15 feet on the outside edges. You see on this on this edge here, there's seven and a half feet to the, uh, to the property line there. But the, but the staff has reviewed it and sees no reason why we should not vacate that, right? Correct. Yes, okay. this is fairly straightforward. And I do have a few notes here um, just for, for each item um, on, the, on the sheet in front of you. Okay. So that is, that is the acres farm lot line vacation and even vacation plot before you. Now what is this out of interest? What is the community health center? Is that a private or is that a public or what is that? So it, it is the community health center that we have here on Lennox Street. And oh, okay. Doing, I believe it's focused more towards counseling. So I have a counseling center there. Oh, interesting. Okay. If it used to be called Free Clinic in New York Valley. NRV Free Clinic. Yeah, Free yeah. Clinic. Yeah, and that's what I was thinking. Mr. Bishop, do you have any or reservations about recommending approval? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Move on to item two. So there's in fact for a marketplace. Okay, so this may look familiar as far as the process. Uh, this is the 13th. Uh, here's a parcel that has been created within the marketplace subdivision, and it is for finding the two uh, This one does include the existing building of Harbor Freight. And uh, it is for 1.81 acres and leaves the parent parcel at 19.155 acres. Uh, so 
uh, really it's, it's simply the uh, same process as has been applied to all these other subdivisions that have come to this committee and um, the review are dedicating a new 15 foot public utility easement here um, in that. and so we may be able to do you know if, for that utility that is that a that particular um I didn't yeah. draft this one. Oh, okay. I, 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 I'm sorry to put you on the spot. No, <laughs> <that's amazing. laughs> I don't I, I just I just I hear things, but uh, I do know that they are uh, subdividing uh, around Harbor Freight. Uh, but I'm not in the know on this one. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I will be able to I'm in the know on <laughs> I apologize for putting you on the spot there. Oh, no. it, it, so there's a private water line easement that will run across uh, the property here and then and then this is uh, uh, this shaded area is part of the private cross access easement that is now created along Market Street. That uh, is one of the odd shaped parcels that I've seen. I've been practicing a long time. It's an odd shaped parcel. Yes. For I mean for a commercial parcel. Lots of curves. And that's really what it looks like. Yeah, and I, I think it does follow the drives. So this is, I mean, if there are questions, this basically is the Harbor Freight building and the, and the, like the envelope around it? Correct. Does it involve any other any questions? Yes, as far, as far as I know, it's just everything that's uh, by Harbor Freight uh, and the road. Uh, I don't know if he went by the, the curve or exactly how, how James Taylor had designed that parcel. Yeah, so it comes out, it basically comes around here. And I think that that's part of the curve here yeah. in the parcel. It's interesting the building not shown on the flat. I guess it doesn't need to be, but it's interesting. Um, is there any reason that street committee should not recommend approval of the plat as presented? No, sir. It's just fairly straightforward. You mentioned know, everything. Is, yeah. All satisfactory. Is this would be okay with recommend approval. Yes, sir. Okay. If it is, you know, if it is, well, if that is a good question. I could go back and ask why why the existing improvements are not shown on the plat. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it would just make it a little bit more intuitive to look at it and uh, explain if there's a question. But the subdivision doesn't really there's no, no reason not to. Okay. Uh, on to item three, subdivision plat for JW Radford contracting. And so this is a townhome subdivision. Uh, 34 lots, and it is located off of um, Shirley Drive, Shirley Area neighborhood. Um, Good to right there. So it's actually to Shirley Drive here. If you're coming off of, uh, if you're entering the Hans Meadow neighborhood. Uh, off of Depot and then come to Sherwood Drive. There's a cul de sac here. It would be an entrance off the cul de sac. And then a road, a private drive runs up the hill, and then there'll be 34 townhome units uh, uh, spaced around the. Uh, uh, it is zoned R3, it has been for a long time. It was a by right development. Site plan was approved. Um, uh, earlier this year, and they started construction. So, so by is, right, by right, you mean it's zoned R3? It's zoned R3, right, and then you need to be for the townhouse. I did uh, pull over the site plan. Let's see. Yeah, that's the site plan. So this is the uh, cul-de-sac that Sherwood Drive, and this represents the, the drive. Up and then the townhomes just kind of line up here. And kind of the <coughs> so 
So it's not a PRD or anything, it's just a garden variety mm -hmm. development within R3. Nothing, yeah. nothing special about it. Right. They, they had gotten these plans to uh, pretty much uh, the approval stage. It's been for a few years now, and, mm -hmm. then, and then they decided to move forward uh, this plan. That's reviewed it and everything conforms to our subdivision ordinance, and you're presenting it to us uh, with no reservations for approval. Yes. Yeah. Any questions, Mr. Yeah. Mitchell? It, it meets all that to be just extended. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is that the area that goes up to uh, the tractor dealership, Bomb Center, whatever it's called? Mm -hmm. the, I mean, the back side of it? Yes. Okay. The old, old Hills building for the Hills. Yeah. Okay. So this was the old Hills tank. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, road that went up to the water tank. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there, there is still potential in the future when we bring one out of time. I get this road connected to here. Yeah. I was going to ask if that if there's any plans for that. Yeah, they worked out something that, that yeah. you know. Yeah. I guess mm -hmm. Mr. Hagen and Mr. Woody are cooperative and mm -hmm. they're willing to pay their portion to mm -hmm. make it public street. I think we'd be open to it. Mm -hmm. right. we, we've yeah. talked to them about it. Just we, we don't have, you know, he, he, he sold it. Yes, he has. Mm -hmm. I'd like to talk to his new ones. Yes. Mm -hmm. we, we've talked to David and to Roger both previously, but Roger has solved that in this, this past year. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Woody has no interest in that property anymore right there? You know, Mr. Woody still has interest in this property, correct? And uh, it's Mr. Hagen. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. It was, it was David that saw him. Yeah, David sold the plaza. plaza. Yeah. So he, he kept the two locks down along Runnick Street, but he sold the plaza. Mm -hmm. So there's different personalities involved in that? Yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> it's not germane to our conversation mm -hmm. here. But, yeah. I, I was wondering about if that road has such a bunch of things that would be nice connection. Yes. It would be. A lot of, it's quite a few trips to the yeah. yeah. For, for mm -hmm. citizens, for emergency services, for mm -hmm. everybody. Yeah. Most okay. activity. And, and just in line with potential in the future as well. Uh, and this plan of development, it doesn't pertain to this, but just a quick question. Will this have like sidewalks and stuff in it? Or it's a development? Or? It, it has walkways in front of the units, but yeah. it's, um, it has, it really does not have any frontage. I'm, I'm sure that, that requires sidewalk uh, because of the, uh, the frontage on the street and it, and it is a private drive. Oh, it's it a private drive? Yeah. Okay. So it is fairly limited in that regard. So that's something I think it's not required. You know, that's yeah. walkways within the development, you know, connecting to the public ground. I got it. Okay. Um, any, any more questions? Any questions, Mr. Mm -hmm. You did the recommend approval. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Uh, next mm -hmm. is subdivision plat for F and D land. Uh, okay. I'm going to pull this up as well, and then I'm going to show you. I think it will be helpful to, to look at this one area. Now this is it's basically right behind Wade's uh, grocery store. Um, so there are a number of parcels, as we'll, we'll see on the plate, that, that run this way linear, uh, you know, towards Wilmot Street. And, and what they've proposed, and they, actually, they have an approved site plan that was approved uh, in April of this year uh, to do four townhome units. Uh, through here, one, two, three, four. So, so the flat. Thing. And I'll, I'll show you the site plan real quick. Here. This is the approved. So this would be Craig Street. This is uh, Comedy Street, and the four townhouse. And then zone door three. It is zone door three. So we would buy that development as well. Is there four of them? There will be four units. Okay. okay. 
So I was transitioning from this one I had mentally, and so for this for this one before us now, they have the lines to be vacated are these paper parcels now, right? That are mm -hmm. um, that are going the other, I guess, mm -hmm. parallel to Craig Street. Parallel to Craig Street, correct. And those are going to be the proposal or whatever the uh, plat is to vacate those and and create lots going the other direction. Uh, to accommodate, I guess, individual ownership of those parcels. The, the, uh, there's not going to be an HOA anything. There's going to be individual parcels for four townhomes, right? Correct. Right. And so this is what it would look like on the plot. You'll notice some shaded area here. Um, this is, they, they do not have, um, there's not 50 feet of right away on Craig Street, so uh, the requirement is to, to, uh, uh, dedicate right away in order to do 25 feet to the center line of the street. So they are proposing to dedicate a 0.017 acre of land uh, to the front on Craig Street and then 0.009 acre of land on Economy Street to the rear of this area. They, they are required to do sidewalk on, um, on Craig Street. Uh, they're, uh, they did pay a fee in lieu of, or they will pay a fee in lieu of, as was approved during the site plan process for uh, not doing sidewalk over here. And um, I was not involved in that site plan process, so I'm not exactly sure why that was granted. Uh, I would I would um, wager to, to, to guess that, uh, you know, it's down on a, a dead end road and there is no sidewalk on either side of the county street all the way up to park. Um, but they, the fee they will be required to, um, it's on the, on the site plan here. Well, you're looking, what's the minimum lot funders for townhouse? Interior your unit is 18, uh, his unit is 30, and a corner unit is 40. Listen to this. <laughs> Are these red or black? Um, well, they, they're, uh, they're going to be subdivided uh, through this process, so, so they certainly could be sold separately. Yeah, but it, it's not clear. Um, I believe um, Greg Duncan has taken over this development. He wasn't the one that, that first started it and got the site plan approved. But my understanding is he, he did, and uh, he does sell a lot of his units. He typically does single family houses. Uh, so, uh, but I'm not sure of the, the exact plans. But they will be, uh, you know, if this is approved, they will be on the whole lot. So it's a simple subdivision, there's no easements being vacated or there any <coughs> Correct. No. There's no no other house or house cleaning other than the lot lines, right? Right. And there's the appropriate private and public access easements and public utility easements that are being dedicated as part of the project. So um, here you'll you see um, the new private variable with ingress egress easement that's shown here, mm -hmm. and then this is a new public utility easement. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's easement gets it separate. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Some sheet three. Yeah. I got it. Um, okay. I see. Mm -hmm. And I have not heard if they it's going to be privately, you know, it's going to be rental. Yeah. 
So, so this uh, funding's been involved with this one longer than, than I have, but uh, basically it was it had been started uh, in the review process in the summer, and uh, and really was uh, was ready to approve by by early fall, and so. Um, this, this one is, uh, I do want to just show you on the aerial where this is, since it's a little, um, a little more hidden because it's down a, uh, down a hill behind her crater, and uh, it's a little harder to see. So this is, this is Diana Drive in Aldwych. And what we're going to look at is a loop road that's going to come off through here. So it's in two pieces. So if you look at it here, you can kind of get a sense the way they, they broke it up on the page. These are match lines here. So if you put those together, you would see the loop that will now be Holland Loop is what they're proposing. And here's all of which that we saw come in here. And then there would be a loop road through here. And um, it is part of the master plan uh, that's, that's been approved as far as the, um, you know, the, you know, what, what they were zoned for. Uh, there's 32 townhome lots in the middle, 24 single family lots on the outside. Um, there is uh, the Okay, so these numbers again, please. Sure, and, and they're on the notes too. Uh, oh, okay. so, uh, but yeah, so they are, um, so it's, it's uh, 56 lots altogether, plus one common area lot. Okay. So, so 32 townhomes here and here. Okay, where is this? Where is this on the drawing? Here, the numbers. Oh, so um, there should be a sheet that says uh, subdivision plot review staff street committee notes. Uh, that's an eight and a half by eleven. Uh, yes. Maybe underneath. Oh, oh. Okay. And so on the second page, it's the. Um, e. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So it's just a, just a few notes to help. You know, very, very nice. Thank you. Yes, very well organized. Keep getting better. Thank you. Yeah. Um, cheat, man. I call it cheat sheet. It's a good cheat sheet. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, sir. Uh, Where's the road that goes across the street? Yes, sir. Have we had any complaints from the homes that he is already on the just finishing up right next to him, like we had last December? Not, not that I'm aware of. I mean, we do uh, go out and we do we do setback inspections, and if we you know, notice debris or you know uh, an unfinished site, we will note that and, and not pass the inspection. And no uh, current residents of any of the places that you just built are complaining. Not not that I'm aware of at this time, but you know. Uh, um, you heard anything, Randy? I haven't. Do we, you know, I guess we don't need to talk to them like we're, you know, like we're in a rural yard or something like that, but this sounds like a pretty big development here. Huh? Yeah, the development's already been approved, and yeah. even if the property, even if the property owner lived in uh, Switzerland and was developing it, it's basically a subdivision mm -hmm. flat mm -hmm. that meets our ordinance. Okay. And so, it, put it this way: there's, I mean, there's, that's the that's the the measure by which we're looking at this and mm -hmm. approval. It's not. Which is going to, you know, there's, there's a development plan. And if it's in compliance with the master plan that we've already approved, and this is basically the final act of that, mm -hmm. which is, uh, the final act before they actually do a, a development plan. Uh, so your your interest is uh, understood, but that's not what this is about. This okay. Is okay. You think we'll see this in that? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Probably not. Oh, okay. I don't think 
Are there good clubs and associates as representing? Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Smalls will be here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Spirit with the common area. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. This is one lot that you see on the edge of the circle to the top, the other one, and then it runs through the middle. And then there's common area to the middle as well. And this and then and then on the end. So that that is that is showing as one lot right now. Okay. There's one common area lot. Okay. Well, it's actually a, I mean the, it's a nice layout, sort of like mm -hmm. a layout. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, the, and the trail is supposed to, to um, <coughs> come over this way and then connect down to Hot Greater as well, so there'll be, be you know, some, some good trail connectivity. So we'll have rear, rear entry alley, sort of, I guess they uh, have an alley in the back for parking? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And then there, there are easements through the alley as well. These are private, uh, no, I'm sorry, especially public drainage easements. Okay. Uh, the engineering staff look uh, closely at. There's a future connector road right there in the upper left-hand corner to be right here. Mm -hmm. I think I said this last time, Sonny, the, uh, it's a very not neat and tidy plat. Thank you. Very nicely done. I don't think my name's on that one. <laughs> but I did draft it. Okay. Very nice. Um, so there's no re there's no reason why we should not recommend approval of this. It conforms with everything, with the approved development plan. Correct. And uh, the some of these and all this and everything. Correct. Yes. Well, would it, yeah, as a PRD, uh, it would be, as long as it agrees with that and we've approved it, then that would be, uh, for instance, lot frontages and everything. But it still does that. Okay, so it conforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty well reviewed when I took over with it and then I looked at it and, and I spoke with the engineering department and they were comfortable mm -hmm. with moving forward. Okay. Can I ask one more question? Is there just one way in and out, or are there several ways in and out? Well, there, there will be several ways. Um, uh, currently, there will be all the which here. Um, let me go back to the area real quick. Uh, there will be all the which that will come down. And then there will be a connection over here. That's great. Can you want to pick them up? Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, for, uh, for future. Uh, I believe what they proposed is uh, there will be a connector road uh, into uh, Kingston Way, and eventually there will be another uh, connector road that winds up uh, Diane Drive. Mm -hmm. Where's the water tower? Can you show me that? Oh, yes. Right here. Right there. Right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's been built up. That photograph is several years old, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah, There's a lot of build up along there, Diane Drive. Yeah. Kingston Way. Keystone Drive is first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and Hawk Raider is, where's Hawk Raider? Uh, not, okay, the road. I guess it's over to the left, yeah, to the mm -hmm. left. Yeah, right there. Okay. Um, Mr. Bishop, do you have any reservations recommend approval? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. Well, that was a good laundry list. And thanks for the uh, organized, organized presentation. Oh, we got one more to get. We did one more. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. oh, yeah, I jumped ahead on the last one. I'm yeah. sorry. Rocco, uh, subdivision, sorry, item F, subdivision plat for Rocco Capozzi. So I think everyone's <coughs> fairly familiar with where his house is uh, on the fence uh, doorway here, East Main Street and, and Montague Street. And uh, basically, there's a four-unit apartment building to the rear, and um, and he is looking to be able to sell this unit. Uh, this this uh, they basically be able to sell them independently of one another. Mm -hmm. Currently, they could not be sold independently of one another because they're on the same parcel. So uh, they did go to the board of zoning appeals, and uh, they did. You see, it was back in January of 2019. And they received variances for setbacks and density, and so they're, they're moving forward uh, at this point. As it, it, was, it was granted by the Board of Zoning Appeals. 
So that is one big parcel going all the way up to East Main Street right now. Correct. That is fascinating. That really is. There's all kinds of stuff on that. So he's just carving off he's just carving off the uh the red parcel. And the setbacks that were prescribed are being that the reduced setback here, reduced setback percentage along uh, along the front of the building. So we are meeting the parameters of the, the board of zoning appeals approval in 2019. Okay, can you repeat that last? So they, they are meeting the parameters of the, the board of zoning appeals approval okay. in 2019 for the variances that were granted. Okay. So there's no residents, staff has no reservations with the subdivision. No, I mean, it. it, it does not meet a number of the, the code requirements, but they did go through the proper step to go through the board of zoning appeals and those kind of things. Right. And that was 2019? Mm -hmm. Is that on your It is. Yes, this is the second bullet. Okay. What what didn't meet this? Uh, what was it? So, so, um, the, uh, the density did not meet for the number of units per the lot size, which is one of our borders on the appeals. Uh, the, um, the frontage alone was, I think, 125, and they, uh, they reduced that to 110 feet. The side yard setback here was, uh, I believe, it's, uh, uh, 10 feet, and it's, uh, it should be 10 feet, and they reduced it to 6.2 feet. Andrew, you're on your game. Yes, sir. Okay. That gives him a, an idea if there's any questions. Okay. No, uh, and I'll, I'll grab the folder as well for the BZA so I have that. Yeah. That's a, little, that's a little twist we haven't had in a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bush, if you okay with the uh -huh. approval? Okay. Uh, excellent job, Andrew. And Sonny, thanks for being here. Uh, you're welcome to stay for the rest, uh, but I want to yeah, commend your organization. This is fantastic. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay, uh, now we'll move on to uh, the intersection, item two, intersection of Constant Drive, Northwest, and Spreadland Farm Drive, Northwest, uh, also known as the uh, Chick-fil-A entrance and surrounding area, directly adjacent area. We, um, as an update, as uh, I mentioned uh, in the emails, we did have a meeting mm -hmm. last week. Uh, Wayne Rainey and I did meet with uh, the Putin's uh, by Zoom. And, uh, both of them, both of them. Yeah. Both, both of them. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it was a very good meeting. Uh, and uh, they obviously want to be a part uh, of a solution. Uh, and uh, they, they do have to work with their. Um, you know, with the, the corporate planners as well for the site. Um, uh, but they they were um, willing to talk more. They they really weren't willing to, you know, there really was, and that wasn't really the intention of the meeting. It was more to say, hey, we really would like to, to work with you moving forward. Uh, I mean, their observation is that there hasn't been uh, much, much of an issue this year. Uh, you know, as, as there has been more past years, okay. uh, and, uh, and that the holiday season just is not what what it, it has been in past years this mm -hmm. year. Um, and so, uh, we did share some ideas with them as far as uh, restricting, uh, you know, potentially restricting right hand turns, uh -huh. and um, restricting right hand turns. Uh, I'm sorry, restricting left hand yeah. turns into the side, right. and then left hand left hand turns out. Um, and um, it, 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 we began that conversation. I mean, I, I think that, that we need to continue if we wanted to pursue that. Um, one idea that Mrs. Kitchen came with, and I think it's been discussed a little bit here, was um, there are two lanes, uh, you know, this being eight, eight lane, 
here if you made this more of a traditional four-way stop would that reduce the confusion of drivers uh, with the turning movements? So but our traffic engineer mm -hmm. rightly noted that it's hard to have a four-way stop if you mm -hmm. have two lanes coming to that intersection, right? Right. I think that was a, that was a good point. Mm -hmm. That's sort of mm -hmm. that's that was a, a good point. Right, with the four-way stop here, with having you know, with, with having eight eight turning movements, basically, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it would it could even cause more confusion if you're trying mm -hmm. to stop a left turn movement or left guy or that uh, person that vehicle is in the left turn lane. Do they have to stop when they're separated? And this is its enforcement rules, but in the I think it'd be hard with the uh, yeah. Okay, but she brought that up too, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, it does have some benefits if, if the intersection was basically <laughs> two legs or two lanes on every leg. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on your meeting with the Kuchins and some other observations, because I have not, and I go out, I'm out there actually probably, I would guess maybe three times a week. Not that I do a lot of shopping, but for different reasons I'm in that area, and I do, you know, look at it. It has not been as bad recently as it has, you know, since some of the times that you do see it. Mm -hmm. um, it has subsided is probably a good word. Mm -hmm. It's uh, and we're probably never going to be able to get the hundred percentile. Uh, I saw a hundred percent of the problem, but. Uh, so with your meeting and everything we've talked about and Samantha's look at this and talking with the coaches, what what does staff want to do? You just want to monitor it? And I believe that's the, and this sort of, kind of where we ended up. Their, their engineers, they actually were also looking at right turn only coming out of the site. And obviously, they have uh -huh. restrictions with the dumpster enclosure there. And that's one thing they're looking at as well. Can they move this dumpster oh. over here? So, because what happens is people kind of angle in and right. turn here. So if anybody's turning right, they're blocking people turning left as well. Well, you know what might be a good gesture, um, and I don't know if it would take council approval or whatever, but if the Kuchins are engaged and wanting to work with us, I think you sort of open, maybe encourage the open thinking on that. And as far as setbacks go or anything, any kind of restrictions we would otherwise have for them, since there is a, a public need there for uh, ingress, egress, and not clogging up, basically not clogging the uh, spread of the farm road up. I don't know if maybe you've already discussed that, but like yeah. you said, why would the not right. that we would participate in costs, right. but if it's there are... Here, so. Yeah, and I think, I mean, there, well, Randy's uh, stepped out, but I, there, there aren't really, I think we would prefer if the dumpsters were three feet off the property line, if it would be our, our one, but we don't have a, we don't have a minimum setback that I'm aware of for the dumpsters uh, off the property line. So the, I think they do have some room to maneuver. Through here, if they were going to look to relocate the, you know, the dumpsters and move them so it's you know direct, directly there, and then, and then they would have to come in and put them up more this way. The dumpsters are probably in the best location on the property as far as. Well, that's tough. Mm -hmm. But they did encourage us to reach out to other property owners to make sure that they, you know, that the other property owners were, were on board and involved as well. When you were talking to them. Did they say what was going on that caused the cluster? Because it was bad for what a week or two. It was bad. It was. Were they having a special going on, or was it just busy? No, I mean they, they said that their their volume is down. Uh, well, because I mean, but, but I guess it's it, they um, is what twenty percent is what was said, uh, and then um, but I think they have gained a lot of efficiencies. Because yeah, because I've been out there several days, different times of the day, I, and I haven't seen a 
I'd like the pictures you took. I haven't seen that, but I've noticed that myself. It has that. not been. It has not been. No. I didn't know what was going on. Maybe we were having a special two for one or something or what. I'll say this is from observation. I mean, whenever it does back up, for it, it's usually not very long. It's and usually because someone comes in and they're just not, they're not moving up and stuff. So they're just yeah, like gaps between cars and, um, yeah, it's just people not knowing what to do with the parking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They have, like McDonald's has a, a dual window along the top of the street. Do they have that or could they do that? You know what I'm talking about? As you go through and check out through two different windows at one time. Yeah, I believe they, I believe they have two windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then they have one drive. And I also, I noticed, I think they might have just added this, that they have a tent next to the um, window where you pick up your food. They have a tent for cash payers. Mm -hmm. Is that what, and then yeah, I, I think they walk the food out to those. I don't know if that's what they would put out there at least once a week mm -hmm. just to go through the lawn. Mm -hmm. But that's for, if you're paying cash, that's where you pay cash. Uh, they, they were generally supportive of, of painting the X, the box. Oh, yeah, 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 and, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, I forgot uh, about that. I mean, yeah. that's... Right. Uh, uh, you know, so they, um, but I think we all agree that it probably will take more than just, just mm -hmm. that uh, okay. to address mm -hmm. the issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're not recommending moving forward with that at this point. Okay. Okay. Not this year. Okay. And, I, and I've asked my folks to continue to watch that because during the holiday season, that's, that's tough for us. Yeah. Uh, we, we have not seen substantial issues in that intersection as we have in previous years. So okay. I'm not, not sure the cause of that mm -hmm. or the lack thereof. But. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. Been a lot of attention given, but there's no sense in you know you, you know using a sledgehammer to fix you know a small nail. I don't have the right, but yeah, it's a good discussion, and we'll we'll revisit this as necessary. Uh, appreciate you taking time to reach out to the kitchens, and if there's any if there's any additional discussion with them. Let them know that at least the street committee, the council, and probably councils as a whole, will work with them in any way we possibly can to help them to continue to be successful. And also, if they want to, you know, if there's a different configuration or adjustment to their property that would help them and help us, uh, just let them, I would. You know. I'd put this on the table too. Sam and I chatted about. Back when we get to our normal, whatever that is, mm -hmm. right. uh, I don't know. <laughs> we may want to consider hiring a consultant to a traffic counts, and mm -hmm. you know we we don't want to have blinders on. We want to make sure we're addressing the concerns in the entire area. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. They were, and certainly they were concerned that they would be perceived as the bad guy. They didn't want that, nor do we want that for them. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason for reaching out to the other, to the management company of the shopping center. And just have, just having a conversation with them. Mm -hmm. uh, Follow just a personal relation. I have a sister that's in, is a major commercial, in major commercial real estate, and about 10 years ago, eight to 10 years ago, they this property has changed hands a little bit. But they were looking at this parcel, and the only reason they didn't purchase it was because of ingress and egress. It isn't, and it's probably something you've heard before. It's not as bad as the marketplace was before we did that. But getting in and out of this is a it, it is a major consideration. So anything we can do to help people get in and out of there is going to help our retail community. But there's an interesting observation from my sister who's not an engineer. <laughs> she said that getting in the access is a problem there. It was a major problem. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for your efforts. And uh, Mr. Bishop, do, or, do we have anything official on our list? Other items? Do we have anything else? Not at this time. We will have a couple of traffic studies to bring back to you in January. Okay. On underworld and staff. Okay. Well, uh, nice job.
Uh, and I guess a, a next meeting of PBD that will definitely be in January. I imagine that will, yeah, that will have perhaps the review with the first meeting in January. So. Okay, again, nice job. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.